when you're approaching these lawnmowers like this, remember the top three things. Um, eventually, I'm getting to where I determined that it's a bad coil, okay? I'm going to show you how I tested the coils. It just takes a simple ohmmeter that you can use to test the coil. Uh, coils, in this case, I got a new one, and I compared it to the old one in the, the meter readings. Uh, but anyways, you just don't jump right to something. You don't jump right to a spark plug, or you don't jump right to, you know, changing the carburetor. Um, so on this one, what I did was uh, I looked at the three basics. And you always got to start off with the three basics, which is, you know, is it getting spark to the spark plug? Okay. Is it getting gas through the carburetor to the combustion? So is it getting spark? Is it getting fuel? And then is it getting compression? And so, you know, just to how do you test those things? Well, it's pretty easy. And I'll spray some starter fluid, starting fluid, you know, brake cleaner, something combustible, flammable. Spray a little bit of that into the carburetor. You have, might have to take the air cleaner cover off. Spray a little bit of that in there and then try to start it with everything put together, you know, except for the air cleaner cover because you got to take that off to spray the spray uh, starter fluid in there. Just a little squirt. And then you pull the string and see if you get in anything. Okay, in this case, there was nothing. I introduced fuel myself in there. It doesn't try to start, nothing like that. So that kind of narrows it down to, for now, uh, no spark. Okay, so I, I tested it with the spark, you know, with the spark plug out against the block, no spark. I tried to, I put it back in and tightened it up, put the wire back on, sprayed some starter fluid in the intake, Try to start it, try to pull it, nothing. And that just kind of confirms, okay, I'm not getting any spark. Now, I'm still not sure whether or not, even if I get, and I got a new coil, I'm still not sure if, even if I get this engine to spark to work, if it's getting sufficient fuel from the carburetor. I still don't know that yet. But we'll see once we get the ignition problem figured out. It could, this could have multiple issues, okay? But I know that it's not getting the uh, proper spark right now. And I'll show you how I tested the uh, coils right here. That's another thing that you can do. This wire, okay, goes over here. Can you see my finger? Yeah, there's a little bitty connector right here where this wire goes. And if this is not grounding or if it's, if it's not working, it's causing this wire to ground the ignition coil all right and that can make it seem it can make it you know not have spark if this is not working correctly so what i do before i go into all getting this new coil and everything is i'll take that off of there let me see if i can zoom in on this and so this is basically the kill switch on the mower this activates it and so when you do the bail action, look at right here, okay, that's not grounded, grounded, not grounded, engine's running, you're getting ready to start or it's running, and then when you turn it off, it grounds, okay. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in, and there's a little tang you got to push down to get this in a little hole right here, and then the exposed wire the copper wire just slides right in here, it's just like that. Let's see if I can get you to see that. This goes in right there. You gotta push this down right here, and then your little copper and exposed wire comes through there. And then you gotta route this down underneath this stuff so it's not contacting anything. All right, this flywheel is gonna be spinning around and all that stuff. Okay. So I got these coils right here, and just uh, I got a little junker uh, meter from Harbor Freight, all right, and I'm going to go to the ohm setting. So this is the resistance setting when I'm going to check these coils. So you take the coil off, it's two, two screws on the engine block, and so you got your old coil off, got your old coil off. And now I'm setting up my meter. So I'm setting this to ohms in the thousands range. This is the hundreds range. I'm gonna go up to the thousands range in the ohm function. 
in the resistance function, okay? Ohms, resistance, you know, same, same stuff. So I'm going to get over here, and I'm going to test this coil, and I should, I'm going to be looking for, hopefully you can see that, I'm going to check this old one first, and you, what you do, it doesn't matter, uh, red, black, doesn't matter. Now, set this on here, and I'm looking, and I'm not getting anything on this coil right here, okay, nothing. But you should just go to the body of the, okay, that says two right there. It's not a lot at all on this coil. Now let's get this Amazon special. And you don't want this touching any metal. I'm working on a metal table here. So I got one probe on the end of the coil and another one right here. And I got 5892. Now I looked up the specs on this and I found 2.5 to 5,000, so 2,500 to 5,000. I'm gonna think that, okay, this is probably gonna work. And as I'm gonna put it on to test it, but actually it's outside of the Briggs and Stratton range um, for, you know, having a good coil or not. But this is, this is a China, it's a China dowel. You know, it's from Amazon, it's a Chinese special, so we'll see if it's gonna work and hopefully the, uh, the, uh, the cord is long enough on this thing for it to uh, reach because it looks like the cord is about a uh, half inch maybe shorter than it should be so we're gonna see and I'll have to take this didn't the new one didn't even come with a boot so I'm gonna have to take this boot off there we go and I'll put it on this new one and I'm getting ready to slap this on the machine so I get this on here and I'll take you over to the mower and show you that and I'll squirt it down with a little WD, just kind of get this, uh, try to get some of the debris off of there. And that getting that WD in there is, uh, helps pull it off a little bit. And then what I do is get, I get a little plug normally, and I have a, and we'll pull this off real quick. Hopefully it comes off. I try not to pinch that much when I'm uh, doing this stuff. So let's kind of get this debris off of the line as much as possible. Then I'll do this and I'll take my jar and I'll put it on there. And then I'll lean this carburetor over to let the fuel come out, whatever's in there. Why is it not doing that? It's freaking hot today. Well, that gas tank is bone dry, so no need to do that, but that's, Kind of the procedure to do that and then you can take and look and see if you have any fuel contamination deep you know so you can decontaminate it and get all that stuff out of there so sometimes this says top this one doesn't so i like leaving these uh coil mounting bolts in the block while i'm waiting for parts because they're so small okay so i didn't see any business cards laying around and this is the old business card trick where you can take a business card and gap your coil Get your coil gap right. If you don't have a business card, I just got this uh, piece of paper, regular piece of paper. I fold it in thirds like this. Gives me a pretty good gap. So I'm going to set the air gap like that. I'm going to find where the magnets are. Okay, I got a magnet side over here. And I'm going to get it really close to where the coil is going to be getting mounted. If it helps you out, you can take off this uh, choke control arm before you do this. But I think I can manage to get this in place or not. <laughs> I can't. I can do it. Okay, here we go. That's on there. Got one started. And just get them started. Okay. And I got my paper. I'm going to put it in here. And then... I will start rotating that magnet around until it sucks that coil on there. Watch that. It's just going to, I'm going to hold this out. I'm going to pull the coil out this way. It's loosely mounted now. And I'm going to bring the magnet around. See, now it's sucking, sucking it right to the, against the magnet. And when it's like that, I'll just take my impact here and lightly, very lightly,
Don't give those too much torque. And then go ahead and rotate, rotate, and pull that paper out of there. Got a nice little air gap, okay? Really nice. About 10 thousandths, I think they say, is what to do on that. I'll route the coil wire down in here. And I'm going to put the plug in, put it kind of back together a little bit, see if I got fire. Okay, now I'm going to use this to squeeze the bale handle up there so I can easily pull the string. Going to turn the light off here real quick and check for spark. It's not helping too much, but okay. Okay, we're going to hold this up against some metal. Hopefully this will work and try to pull it a little bit. It may not be a good uh, ground for it, <laughs> so I'm just going to put this in the plug. Yeah, there's just really no good bare metal to uh, test this on, so yeah, I'm just going to put this in, and it's, I'm going to give it a few pulls, see if I can just get, get it to even pop with a little carburetor cleaner. Okay, I just got the plug in. And the plug wire is on. I made sure everything is clear from underneath the mower. I got a little uh, carburetor start cleaner, carburetor cleaner, whatever. Spring a little in there. Okay. I'm going to go over here and see if there's any life. So this should do it. Should be getting something. See if it pops. Okay, that's weird because there ain't no gas in there. <laughs> Should have died pretty quick, but that's good. So it was a bad coil. All right, so we'll get this slapped together and uh, call this good. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, hope you enjoyed the show and how to troubleshoot this thing.